Hi! In today's tutorial, you are going to learn how to paint this cool double rainbow dotted snake bottle. Um, this is just an old garbage wine bottle that you just want to make sure you remove the label from. And um, I just peel it off and then I soak anything that won't come off. Gone, And then it comes nice and clean. And then you do want to wash it with soap and warm water. Now I am using a chalk stick and I'm just going to find the seam of the bottle and mark it off because we want two different paths here. So we're going to just start rotating the bottle and drawing on two different paths. So you start at the bottom on one side and then rotate to the other side and then they're going to crisscross at a point. So really what you're trying to do here with your guidelines is keep them the same distance apart, you know, as well as you can, just eyeballing it here. But that way your design is nice and equal. So we want two separate paths. The design is going to go one direction on one path and the opposite direction in the other path. And also I'm using cool colors on one path and then warm colors on the other path. So we will just see how this turns out. You can do it however you want. So you do also need a palette or just like a paper plate or something and a damp cloth. And I'm just showing you the tips that I'm using in today's tutorial. Um, this is a 34 piece set from the Dot Art Depot and the handle has a curved end and a straight end. So just depending on what you like to use. I will also show you later on um, how to create this design using pencils and Q-tips for those who don't have a tool set. Um, and then I'm using DecoArt gloss enamel paints. They are uh, made to adhere to glass and um, once they're baked on, they become permanent with the bottle. So we're starting off with the biggest tool size. This is size 27. We're just gonna make four dots going straight down one of the paths and using all the same color. So now we're going to be placing with the same color smaller dots that go right in between offset the previous row there to each side. Now because we're wanting this this to angle down, okay, we're going to put all the dots going to one side. Um, and you'll see what I mean as we go here. But anyway, so we're just going to make the dots get smaller and smaller. So this is the next size. This is size 29 and so we're just going to keep going in that same direction so now just offset that last row we're going to place just a little bit of a smaller dot and do four down each side again and we're just going to be repeating this over and over um, but it can look complicated sometimes all right now tool size number 30 we're just going to go ahead and place the last couple dots that'll fit within our little lanes all right so you just have to kind of picture the center as kind of a road um, you want to find the center of the road as we go down here I will list the colors that I'm using um, in this video's description so you'll find that right below the video all right now I'm using again going back to the biggest of the four tools that we're using today for the center line okay and then you just go down a step so 27 28 and then you just make four and then four going downwards, okay? You keep with that same pattern. The same way that we did it at the top with the pink. We're going to do it with red. And then that's size 29. And if you make a mistake, it's no big deal. Just get a damp cotton swab and twirl that paint up and away from your project. And then let it dry and move on. It's no big deal. It's not the end of the world. All right, and you just want to try to imagine the center of the road there. So you're going to go downwards. So part of the design is going to fall off the end there with this orange color. So we're using orange now. Again, make the center and then descend in size with your dots on out, four down. And you know, you could do this longer with your colors. You can make them shorter. Um, and you don't have to use the same colors that I'm using. It's whatever you want to do, whatever you like. Um, I thought, you know, like a red and white contrast or like, a, like an orange or like a um, scarlet color with white would be really, really pretty. Or a blue and scarlet would be really pretty. You could just do anything you want. I just always lean towards rainbow because it's my favorite. Okay, so I did pink, red, orange, and now yellow. So this pattern again is going to fall off 
of the bottle even more so. So you may not get all the dots on the one side and that's fine because that's how it's supposed to look. And then after this is, I go back with orange. So what I did here was just a little bit of a different approach. You could just alternate, you could just go back to pink, but I go back in the opposite direction. So I go back to orange and then red and then pink, and then back to red and then orange and then yellow, and then orange and red and pink. Yeah, so I just go back and forth. And I just wanna say a real quick, thank you so, so much for watching. And if you're new to my channel, I would absolutely love to have you as a subscriber. So now I flipped the bottle and we're gonna go in the opposite direction. So if you just flip the bottle and you keep doing what you're doing, your design is going in the opposite direction. So that's great, okay. So now I'm going green, light blue, dark blue, purple, back to dark blue, light blue, green, light blue, dark blue, purple. Okay, so that's how the color scheme goes here. Um, and I'm leaving the side that I painted of the warm colors up so they can dry while I do this. So, because it, it's kind of hard to paint on bottles. So I just let, I just like kind of notch it up. But at this point now you'll have to rotate uh, in order to keep your pattern going and to know where your pattern goes. So you can't just like jump up. But for this start, I can just jump up. Anyway, so I made, again, the largest rose goes down the center of the lane. And I just did four of each color with size 27. And then I followed up right next to and in between uh, 28 and then 29. And now I've got my 30. And just going to go ahead and mark all the way down to where I feel like it needs to go. Whether it actually touched your line, your line's not perfect. You know, you know, the design that you're going for. So just do what you feel is going to look right. Sorry, that's my dog, my Chihuahua Pablo, snoring very loud, very loudly. Um, we just moved, so my whole world is completely upside down and in boxes and scattered, and it's, it is an awful feeling, let me just tell you. I'm sure a lot of you know what I'm talking about. Leave me a comment below and let me know your feelings on moving and how you best deal with it. I am just trying to slowly get back to normal and unbox the things that are the most important first. I mean, obviously the kitchen had to be unboxed first because, you know, got to cook. Um, and then, you know, we're finally getting the washer and dryer in, got the internet hooked back up. I mean, it's feeling good, but it is a beast. It has been absolutely a beast. All right, here is the part that I show you how to make this design using a cotton swab and a toothpick. I didn't mean to say pencil earlier. Um, it's just a cotton swab and a toothpick is all you need and you can pull this off. Now, the reason I didn't do the whole bottle like this is because, hey, it is a cotton swab and a toothpick and it is definitely going to turn out a little bit sloppier than using a proper tool set, right? But regardless, I still wanted to show you because it can be done. And if that's all you've got, hey, that's all you've got. No big deal just move on um, so you just want to make the center line with the cotton end of the cotton swab and then flip it over and on the other end of the cotton swab you want to use the sick part and you might have to um, double dot the dot that's right next to the center just to make it a little bit bigger and then dot next to it with just the sick just once and that'll make it a little bit smaller and then you are going to break a um, toothpick in half and then you can try to sand down a little bit um, of the broken edge of that toothpick and that will make the um, you know the wood won't be all splintered and it'll be a little smoother to make a good round dot as best as you can and I didn't really need to use the teeny tiny dot uh, end of the um, toothpick because it was too small for this design. Or if you do, just kind of double it up like that. You just kind of want to load up your paint. Well, here is the bottle. It's looking much fuller and I really love this design. And I'm just gonna show you, I'm gonna go right up into a stopping point. And it's okay because the design is not gonna be, you know, even on the edge and that's okay. And I'll show you why in just a second. So here it is, design's all dry. This is the next day. And you can see where it, it ends and it's, you know, jagged. But that's okay because now 
I was like, well, what can I do with the end? And I thought about doing a rope or I thought about doing some tool. But I found some Americana decoupage. Um, and I just figured, hey, let's try um, some gold flake or some, I guess this is more copper than anything. And I found this at the Dollar Tree. It was, you know, a couple bucks. And mm, I think this is an absolute huge fail. So <laughs> I basically peeled it all off. No big deal. I, yeah, it just was not working at all. And um, maybe if it was like the smooth kind, like the sheets, it might have been prettier and, and worked better. But this particular application just did not work for me. Mm -mm. Leave it if you like it or you can do something else. But anyway, so I'm going back in with the decoupage and repainting it and just to try to get it tacky again. And, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. Like I said, you can go down to the edge. You can cover some of the dots. It's okay if you wanted a straight line, you know, just go ahead and um, draw on a straight line and then just only dot up to that point. I just wasn't sure exactly how I was going to end it up here. And then cover up the neck and all the little divots and cracks and creases in the tip there. And then I was like, you know what? I think glitter would look amazing and you could do any color that you want you could try um a, to bring out the blues or the green or the you know whatever you want but i went with purple and boy is it absolutely beautiful so i got this glitter also at the dollar tree and i have a little plastic sheet underneath the bottle so i'm not worried about pouring or over pouring um onto the desk or you know wasting a bunch of glitter because um, you can just load it right on up however much you want and then we can just pick up that little plastic sheet and gather up you know all the glitter and pour it back into the bottle so there's no waste there so nothing to worry about there um, and this is how beautiful and shiny it turned out I love it so much the decoupage really held it on you could put another layer on top of this if you wanted to but I did not I'm not really that worried about it I just use these bottles for decoration so they don't really get handled much and then I was like well to take it a step further I've got a little string of fairy lights that actually have a cork on the end. They go in bottles for decoration. So this was like the perfect thing for this particular project. I was like, yes, absolutely, let's try it. So I stuck them in the bottle and turned off the lights and magic. Love it. Bye now.